Good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another round of Astros recap postseason edition. So it is Tuesday, October 26, 206 p.m. So the Astros actually played game one of the World Series and foreshadowing there for you in about five hours. So uh, also, fan right here next to me uh, blowing. So if there's any background noise, it's just a fan. So want to point that out. I am back from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Mantua. Went to all those places, really. Uh, happy to be back. Uh, I did watch Game 6 of the ALCS from my hotel room. Astros, obviously, won their third AL pennant in the last five years. So excited about that, obviously. Game 1 starts in five hours, so getting pumped for that. Enthusiasm isn't necessarily there now. Happy with where the Astros are at, obviously, but not satisfied as they got to win four more games for that satisfaction level to be at the very top. So, obviously, we talked about this, you know, when I talked to you on, on Thursday. The big swing of the series was game four, and that big Altuve home run in the seven-run ninth inning, that just changed everything. And we actually brought that, mo that momentum to Minute Maid Park, and we beat them down. Well, we didn't. We didn't actually, you know, crush it. It was 5 nothing. We shut them down. Luis Garcia was incredible, like as good as Framber Valdez was in game, uh, game 5. So uh, Luis Garcia was great. So, I mean, you at some point had to get some good starts, and we got them in both game 5 and 6 and uh, win this series against the Red Sox in six games, 4-2. to two. So, yeah, we're uh, feeling good. Home field advantage, obviously playing the Atlanta Braves who knocked off the Dodgers in six games as well so uh, yeah we'll have home field here so obviously game one Minute Maid Park rocking tonight uh, excited for it um, from or Valdez we'll get to start but actually preview I want to spend most of this podcast previewing this series this upcoming series obviously the World Series but I do want to just quickly go over game five obviously that's old news as of now or game six I should say in the ALCS that's old news as of now, but just because that's where I left off my last podcast. So obviously winning this game, scoring a first inning run. So Alvarez, with a runner on first, hit a deep fly ball into right center field, and Kike Hernandez was there, tried sort of a basket catch, didn't work, it dropped, it fell, it scored an early run for the Astros. So that's how they got on the board. Garcia was dealing. Uh, the Astros at a sixth inning run. It was actually on a ground ball that was turned into a double play. Yet, I think, I want to say Alvarez on third base. Alvarez had a triple, I think, to start that inning with nobody out. And then it was guy looked like Kyle Tucker, I think, after him. Uh, well, Correa walked, I believe. So Correa's first and third, nobody out. And this was after the Astros had second and third, nobody out, couldn't score. And I didn't want that to come back and cost him because in a one nothing game, you got to take advantage of opportunities, especially with nobody out and runners on second and third. The Astros have been fantastic with two outs, uh, runners on base, runners on scoring position. They've, yeah, I think back, I don't want to get too off topic here, but I think back to 2019, the Astros that year were terrible in the postseason uh, with two outs or just runners in scoring position. They were hitting like 150 or maybe even worse than that. So, but their pitching is what actually got them to you know game seven of the World Series and they lost of course so but if I remember correctly yeah 2019 was a rough year uh, in terms of getting timely hits in the postseason the Astros have just done that the entire postseason and have been incredible uh, their lineup is just insane right now um, but yeah they, they get the hits and they find the holes and they need them but yeah, that was the first time I can think so far this postseason the Astros had a golden opportunity. Uh, I can't remember exactly what inning that was, but I do remember it was Evaldi was still in the game and he struck out the side, I believe. I uh, Correa chased a pitch out of the zone, it was like a 3-2 count. Then I think Tucker struck out and somebody else struck out. Can't maybe, might have been Yuli or somebody like that, but yeah, it was still one to nothing at that point. Red Sox, uh, Red Sox had to keep it right there. But in the sixth inning, yeah, with runners on first and third after an Alvarez triple and a Carlos Correa walk, Kyle Tucker hit a ground ball on one hop. Right, it was a hard, hard 
ground ball right to the first baseman. Uh, I think Schwarber over there it fielded on a hop, and Correa really didn't know whether the ball had hit the ground or was still in the air, so he was sort of caught in no man's land. So it was a quick, you know, tag the base or step on the base tag Correa. Meanwhile, Alvarez, who had a tremendous read, was running home on the play. So Schwarber threw it home, and it was too late. So scored the second run there. Kyle Tucker, the big three-run home run to really, um, you know, give us some insurance there to make it five nothing. And then yeah, we shut them out. Only allowed two hits. I mean, Garcia was just incredible. Um, actually got pulled out a lot, a lot earlier than I thought. He went five and two thirds. Only one hit, one walk. Struck out seven. He was just incredible. Maton got a pop out to get through the sixth inning. Graveman had a uh, scoreless. Gave up a hit, walked a guy, two strikeouts. Graveman, he actually got out of trouble because he struck out, I think it was Verdugo. My, no, it wasn't Verdugo. Verdugo got thrown out. It says it was a strike about throwing out double play in that inning, which was huge because they had runners first and third, one out, and Graveman was sort of laboring a little bit. But uh, Martin Maldonado with the incredible throw just right on the bag to tag out Verdugo to end that inning. Can't remember exactly who they struck out. But yeah, strike him out, throw him out, got through that inning. At that point it was still 2 nothing, so that was pretty big uh, for Graveman to get out of the seventh, of course. Uh, I want to say Stanek pitched the eighth. I lost my spot here. Let me find it. <laughs> um, yeah, Stanek pitched the eighth. Had a nice 1-2-3 inning. And then Presley, also a nice, quick inning. And, yeah, the bullpen just, just picked up. I mean, they, they they did great. Series was kind of weird. You know, you felt you know down 2-1. We talked about a lot of this, of course, on Thursday. But down 2-1, looking like down 3-1 as the Red Sox had the lead going into the eighth inning. And then the Astros flipped the switch and never looked back and took three straight, and they're moving on to the World Series. So, yes. Super excited. Hopefully, be pumped up. I'm a little, uh, I think like sore throat. I'm a little out of, you know, just don't feel right today. But uh, hopefully, that'll pass and I'll be pumped up for the game tonight. It's what I'm looking forward to. So, yes, the roster recently got posted. Um, Jake Myers will not be on this roster. Uh, I did not see his name. I saw uh, Marwin Gonzalez's name. I think that's the only difference. Uh, Lance McCullers obviously will not pitch in this series, so he's his season's done. Um, so yeah, I mean, who missed it? Was it Oda Rizzi missed the the division series when McCullers was there? So you'll have Oda Rizzi or Zach Greinke. Uh, rotation wise, Valdez is pitching on regular rest tonight, so he gets game one, of course. That was interesting. Urquidy will get the start tomorrow in game two, which I thought was weird. So I guess Garcia will get the extra day off and pitch in game three, be my guess. Then I think you go Granky in game four, um, which would put Alvarez back on regular rest if he pitched in game five. Of course, the World Series, pitchers, the way things are handled, everything's a little different. I mean, you throw everything out the window when it comes to days of rest and pitchers, and you'll, you, you'll use... You know, a very unorthodox in a World Series with pitchers and, you know, trying to figure things out. Obviously, the series play out determines on how you use your pitchers, whether it's short rest out of the bullpen, this, that, and the third. It's just, I, I'm not even going to get a guess. I just know that Valdez is today, or Keys tomorrow, and we'll just leave it at that. And the roster stays the same. No Jake Myers, so you'll have McCormick and Siri out there in center field, probably a platoon situation. And then, yeah, um, so unfortunate for McCullers, unfortunate for, you know, Jake Myers. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just the injuries, just part of part of the game. So, and that's why we've lost both of them. Uh, it would be interesting to see what, what, what Valdez do we get tonight. Do we get Valdez, you know, the game, game five Valdez, or do we get, you know, Valdez who pitched, you know, in the Vision Series in, you know, one of the first games in the LCS. So I, I really don't, don't know what to expect here. Um, I'm gonna hope that he, you know, just pitches. I mean, if he, I mean, I'm a recency bias type guy. So his last start was Game Five. He was phenomenal. I mean, now he pitches at home, so the fans are on his side. So, yeah, I mean, you're with Moldy. 
you know, you come up with a game plan and you stick to it. So we'll 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 hope for the best. And and you know, Garcia obviously pitched phenomenal as well. Uh, now he only went five and two thirds. So you know, Garcia, they're they're trying to sort of it's the World Series now. It's ALCS prior. So you need to sort of um, throw out the whole, you know, Garcia says he feels fine. He likes the fact that he pitched 200 plus innings, but had never pitched this much ever in any big league career. In fact, I think he jumped, I might have mentioned this a while back, but I think he jumped from single A all the way to the big leagues, Luis Garcia. So, but this is the most he's ever pitched. You know, he started to gradually sort of go up, but he, like, from here, went all the way up here now. Uh, and terms of innings pitched so but yeah it's the World Series now you throw a lot of that stuff out the window most of these players are probably gassed at this point you're just relying on adrenaline to get you through these final seven games if it goes seven so but yeah just throwing a lot out there a lot out there so the Braves obviously um, beat the Dodgers so uh, the Dodgers obviously after the Astros won I kind of wanted the Dodgers to win because I'd love that matchup and the drama. But um, I was just happy we're in the World Series, playing the Braves, obviously. So um, Charlie Morton gets the start for them tonight. So old friend Charlie Morton, last time we played against Charlie Morton, if you remember, was Game 7 last year when he played for Tampa Bay. And he shut us down pretty good, eliminated us from the playoffs. Um, so, yeah, but Charlie Morton will get the nod today. Max Freed, who's sort of their ace, will pitch tomorrow, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, you got Valdez against Morton tonight, and you'll have Jose Arquiti against Max Freed tomorrow. So uh, Eddie Rosario obviously was incredibly playing out of his mind against the Dodgers, so he won that MVP award, rightfully so. Just like Alvarez, rightfully so, won the AL CS MVP award for the Astros. But looking forward to it. I'm not going to underestimate the Braves. Obviously, they went into the postseason with the worst record, 88 and 74. 88 and 70. Yeah, it sounds right. 88 and 74, I believe, was their final win total. So it's kind of like 19. I mean, the, the Nationals weren't an amazingly good record-wise team. I mean, they were good, but they were a wild card team. So and we played them, and they beat us. So I'm not going to underestimate anybody. I do think the Astros had the edge in the series, so, um, but yeah, we got to continue to get good starts, and of course, do what we've been doing hitting wise. I think they'll be just fine. So, um, lineups have not been announced yet for tonight, so I can't really give you that. Um, obviously, I think with the Braves, you know, I wrote them off, you know, mid-season after they lost to Cunha and, and, and Soroka. I, I thought they didn't have a chance, but they went out the deadline. They added outfield bats, Jock Peterson, Eddie Rosario, who's really come come up big for him, and um, Adam Duvall to sort of fill the void. And they were just going to sort of add so many outfielders at that point. We'll just see whatever works, and Rosario's worked. So, yeah. Um, obviously, Freddie Freeman there at first base, Ozzy Albies at second. Dansby Swab, Dansby Swanson, right? Yeah, sounds right. That <laughs> short. Austin Riley at third. Uh, catcher wise, see, I haven't played him yet, so I can't really go through everybody. Um, yeah, things will start to stick a little bit once we play a few games, but um, yeah, I mean, I've faced the Braves all year, so the National League team obviously didn't play any NL East teams this year, so it'll be, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But yeah, very proud of the Astros, the way they've been able, I mean, the postseason pedig pedigree and the experience they have, I mean, when they've been down and out, they've, you know, this Red Sox series, man, I just, I, I, I give the Astros a lot of credit. Happy with what they've accomplished, but obviously we're not done yet and we're not satisfied yet. So, need four more wins for it to be a season to remember, definitely, uh, for the Astros. Uh, but yeah, winning their third pennant. You think about this, um, 
the Astros obviously have been to the ALCS five times, five times in a row. This was their fifth straight year, so golden era of Astros baseball. I started these podcasts back in 2017 when it was just uh, the audio. I had no video like I'm doing right now, but for this, like, the Astros never return or whatever the case may be. Obviously, you know, we're losing Correa after the year. I think fans need to get over the fact that he ain't going to be back next year. I see no way, no how. Uh, the Astros are not going to pay him what he's going to be wanting. So, But Correa's going to be gone. I mean, you have you know, young people like Alvarez and Tucker. You're going to have uh, Altuve and Bregman around, so the team still should be good. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens with Verlander and things like that. I know I'm talking like the season's over. I'm just trying to give you a little background of what this is going to look like. Winning this World Series, there is pressure on the Astros. Because if you go to the ALCS five times and you go to the World Series three times in that five-year span, you need to take at least two or three of those World Series, and that's what the Astros will be looking to do. Um, I'm not going to sit here and talk about the cheating scandal. I know the 2017 title's tainted. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to be a homer. Uh, that that title is ta- tainted a little bit. So this one, and you know, fans and, and, and idiots out there are going to, you know, if the, whether the Astros win or lose, they're going to say, if they win, they're going to say that they're still cheating. And if they lose, they're going to say, well, they needed cheating to win back. And it's just, I'm, I'm, I, I don't even like speak on that anymore. The, the idiot, idiot fans that with the easy takes out there, I don't really care. I'm just, listen, it's over. It's done with the Astros. have moved on. I've moved on. Fans have the right to do what they want to do. But a lot of them are just idiots. I'll just say that. Um, yeah. The stupid casual fans that turn into fans when their team gets good or goes to the postseason, and then when I talk about the Astros cheating, people that just don't do any research or are knowledgeable about anything that happened, I'm not saying they didn't cheat. They did cheat. They stole signs. The title's tainted in 17. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Okay? But to act like they're still doing it, I think, is asinine. I think it's insane to think that they're still cheating. And the Astros have played a phenomenal baseball on the road uh, this year and into the postseason. So don't give me the fact that they're cheating everywhere they go. I just I'm not. I know I'm getting into it as I speak, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. So yeah, yeah. So you know, the Astros bullpen's been great. Starters. We'll we'll, we'll see what we get tonight. But yeah, talk about this uh, often. The Astros and their success always starts and ends with the hitting, so uh, their offense and their hitters are doing the thing that makes our pitchers uh, relax, make th- makes things a little easier. So, but yeah, I've got much to talk about, only one game, and then we'll we'll get to you here when we get a few games into the World Series. Trying to remember anything here, if I'm forgetting things. I'd love to hear your comments, obviously, always welcome in the comment section below. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna wrap things up here. It'll be a quick, uh, quick, little quick uh, podcast here. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, we start game one tonight. We'll have the day off on uh, Thursday. So Thursday might be a day I'll be able to jump back on and give you a quick breakdown of games one and two. And then you'll have three in Atlanta. Your next off day will be on Monday. I want to say Thursday, Friday. Yes. No. Wait. Yeah. Friday, Saturday. Yeah. If the series goes to six, seven games, I'll be here probably most likely on Monday. But that'll be the plan. So look for me Thursday. Obviously, I would have had this podcast out earlier. Couldn't find a good spot in our hotel rooms to really set up. And my mom goes to bed early, so she's sleeping in one of the beds. So (laughs) I didn't want to wake her up. But, um, yeah, so... um, Yeah, I had to wait till today. I would have done it last night, but... Our plane flight was at 7 a.m. yesterday morning. We were up at 4.30, and I was sleeping at the majority of yesterday just trying to catch up on sleep. So that's why I'm sort of late. I wanted to get this out with maybe four hours or so to spare until game one. If you're watching this, they might have played game one, game two. So, But, again, love your, your, your comments and like this video. Share with your friends all that good stuff. And we'll see you most likely on Thursday. We'll wrap things up there. If not, it'll be Friday morning or Friday afternoon like today. But, yeah, we'll wrap things up there. We'll see you then.